Hey, thanks for joining. Today we're going to be reading from Neville Goddard's The Power of Awareness, Chapter 19, Essentials. The essential points in the successful use of the Law of Assumption are these. First, and above all, yearning, longing, intense, burning desire. With all your heart, you must want to be different from what you are. Intense, burning desire is the mainspring of action, the beginning of all successful ventures. In every great passion, desire is concentrated. As the heart panneth after the water brooks, so panneth my soul after thee, O God. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Here, the soul is interpreted as the sum total of all you believe, think, feel, and accept as true. In other words, your present level of awareness. God means I am the source and fulfillment of all desire. This quotation describes how your present level of awareness longs to transcend itself. Righteousness is the consciousness of already being what you want to be. Second, cultivate physical immobility. A physical incapacity is not unlike the state described by Keats in his Ode to a Nightingale. A drowsy numbness pains my senses as though of hemlock I had drunk. It is a state akin to sleep, but one in which you are still in control of the direction of your attention. You must learn to induce this state at will, but experience has taught that it is more easily induced after a substantial meal or when you wake in the morning feeling very loath to rise. Then you are naturally disposed to enter this state. The value of physical immobility shows itself in the accumulation of mental force, which absolute stillness brings with it. It increases your power of concentration. Be still and know that I am God. In fact, the greater energies of the mind seldom break forth, save when the body is stilled and the door of the senses closed to the objective world. Now the third and last thing to do is to experience in your imagination what you would experience in reality had you achieved your goal. Imagine that you possess a quality or something that you desire, which hitherto has not been yours. Surrender yourself completely to this feeling until your whole being is possessed by it. This state differs from reverie in this respect. It is the result of a controlled imagination and a steadied, concentrated attention. Whereas reverie is the result of an uncontrolled imagination, usually just a daydream. In the controlled state, a minimum of effort suffices to keep your consciousness filled with the feeling of the wish fulfilled. The physical and mental immobility of this state is a powerful aid to voluntary attention and a major factor of minimum effort. The application of these 
three points. Desire. Physical immobility. The assumption of the wish already fulfilled is the way to at one meant or union with your objective. One of the most prevalent misunderstandings is that this law works only for those having a devout or religious objective. This is a fallacy. It works just as impersonally as the law of electricity works. It can be used for greedy, selfish purposes as well as for noble ones. But it should always be borne in mind that ignoble thoughts and actions inevitably result in unhappy consequences.